in this lecture, what we're going to do is continue the idea of a binomial distribution, and we're going to examine binomial trials to look at if we did something seven times, how many times might we have a success? In other words, this is a lot more nerdy stuff to learn brought to you by the infamous Dr. Dog. A binomial trial is one incident. Uh, binomial trials may be repeated. For instance, if we come in and we flip a coin, that's a trial. We may repeat that trial seven times. Now, have we ever thought about, well, what if we flipped a coin seven times? What are the possible outcomes for that? Uh, how likely are we to get, say, five heads and two tails? Well, it's pretty interesting. The formula for determining the probability of having R successes and N trials is given by this. C gives us the number of times it will happen, and we want to know the number of trials that we will wind up with R successes and N total trials. It's given by the formula N factorial divided by R factorial and times N minus R factorial. We might, uh, what might the possible outcomes be, say, for getting uh, five heads and seven throats? Notice this symbology here. This is another way of saying the same thing. Having R successes and N trials. Having five successes and seven trials. For the nerdy nerds among you, considering the following math formulas, uh, the first one getting no heads out of seven throws is seven factorial divided by seven factorial over zero factorial. Remember the formula? 7 factorial over 7 factorial times 7 minus 7 factorial, 7 factorial over 7 factorial, and then 0 factorial. By definition, 0 factorial is 1. So we wind up with 7 factorial divided by 7 factorial, and the count of times that would happen would be 1. Now, if you'll carry all of these through, you can follow it and see how many they happen. Getting one head in 7 trials, and only one head is 7. Uh, getting two out of se two heads in seven trials is 21, three heads in seven trials is 35, and so forth. Now, when we calculate all of those trials, we can add them together to see how many possible outcomes there are. Then we can turn it into probabilities, because if there's one out of 128, then we have a 0.8 percent, eight tenths of a percent of uh, getting no heads in seven trials, and we can continue on. Now, what is interesting with that is that when you turn it sideways, look at it. All of a sudden, it begins to look like a normal distribution. And actually, the more of those that you do, the more they approximate a normal distribution. In this one, we have a mean of uh, right in the center, and the mean is given by the probability of success times the number of trials. In this, we have a 50% probability of success. We have seven trials, so our mean would be 50% times seven, which is 3.5. Now, the standard deviation of this distribution, that's these little standard deviations here, is given by the square root of the number of successes, number, not, not the, the square root of the number of trials, times the probability of success times the probability of failure. Fairly interesting little graph, isn't it? Looks pretty cool. Just for laughs, let's talk about the probability of flipping a coin seven times and getting no heads. Not very much, is it? But what is the probability of getting four heads and three tails? Well, 27.3% of the time that will happen. And what is the probability of getting seven heads in a row? Well, about the same as getting no heads. I just thought you'd enjoy looking at that. Welcome back to the dog cave. Uh, we finished up this little discussion of binomial distributions. A few concepts you really need to know here. You need to know your P's and Q's. You need to know your P hats and Q hats. You need to understand that binomial distributions have a mean and a standard deviation. Now, when we go on to do some things with confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, we're going to do some neat stuff with inferential statistics. Really look forward to getting there. Hang in there, friends.